I'm having an awesome time with Miles Monroe, and I mean awesome time. If you missed yesterday and you missed Monday, you got to call our ministry and see if they can send you a copy of the programs. It has been awesome. He's been talking about God's idea. Yes. God's big, big idea. <laughs> wow. I mean, the stuff you've been saying about the kingdom and God's idea where he sat and said, let us make men in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion. And then God's idea was polluted by the devil's idea. Absolutely. And now God is asking us to renew our minds. In other words, come back to God's own idea. Absolutely. And, and the whole uh, incredible truth you brought about the kingdom of God. Yes. Okay, now one more time. God's big idea was let them have dominion. Yes. You know, like I said in the first program, there's nothing more powerful on earth than an idea. Ideas control everything we do. As a matter of fact, we are living our ideas every day. We call them ideologies. An ideology becomes a philosophy, and a philosophy becomes your lifestyle. And every human being, 6.7 billion of us watching this program today, many of you are sitting there in your houses maybe, your apartments, maybe in prison, in Europe, in Africa, wherever you are. You know, you are a victim of the philosophy of your culture. And the only way to change your lifestyle is to change your philosophy. The only way to change your philosophy is to change your ideology. And to change your ideology, you need to change your ideas. David calls this word idea precept. He says, Father, teach me your precepts that I may live correctly. You see, your ideas control your life. And what I try to do in this new book is to, to reintroduce an old idea that is as fresh as tomorrow. And that is God's original idea was for earth to be a colony of heaven, colonized by his own children, filling the earth with his culture and his morality. In other words, God's plan was for earth to be an extension of heaven with the governing influence of heaven over earth. Christ used two terms that need to be explained. And you know, when we talk about the kingdom, I become concerned because a lot of religious people begin to think, you know, oh, there's that kingdom stuff again. But let me just do this first. The only message that Jesus preached was the kingdom message. The question was asked, who do you say I am? They said, some say you are a prophet. Some say you are Elijah come back. Some say you are John the Baptist. In other words, you're a prophet, a prophet, a prophet. Now, the problem with being a prophet is uh, you cannot have a kingdom. You're only a spokesman. Hang on. Yeah. So he turned to them and said, who do you say I am? And Peter says, after a few minutes, Peter says, you know, I believe you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Now, the word Christ, we know the word Christ, Mashiach, literally means anointed king. It doesn't just mean anointed one, anointed king. Christ says upon that statement, I'm going to build my ecclesia. Ooh, and ecclesia is the, is the Greek word. It's, it, it's, it's actually, the word ecclesia was invented by the Greeks. That's why Christ couldn't say, I'm going to build the ecclesia, the church. He said, I'm going to build my church. Why? Because there were others. Ecclesia was the name the Greeks gave to the senate of the, of the, 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 the kingdom of a king. The senate was those who the king handpicked to be his counsel, and he would give them his mind, and they'd make it legislation. That group was called ecclesia. We translate into English as church. The church is actually God's agency for kingdom distribution of God's morals, values, and God's administration. That's why Paul says, from the beginning, it was God's intent that through the church, his wisdom be made manifest. Why? The church is actually a government agency of heaven. <laughs> I love it. That's so Jesus awesome. said, upon the fact that I am a king, the king, I'm, I have the right now to build my kingdom. And then he says, the gates of hell shall, shall not, not prevail, prevail against my kingdom. Yeah. Now, let me correct that the concept here. I thought that meant that hell had gates, etc. But when I did my research, I was shocked to find out that the word hell there is the word Hades. Hades is the word for grave, the cemetery. Sure. There are three words that are translated hell in the Bible. The King James Version is a great translation, but it doesn't do a good job 
on these kinds of words. For example, the three words in the Bible for hell is the word Gehenna, Sheol, and Hades. Now, in the King James Version, we translate all of them as hell, so we don't know the difference, but they're very different. Hades is the grave, Sheol is the lake of fire, right, and Gehenna is the place of burning, of torment. And there was, of course, an area in that area that was actually known as Gehenna, which means the place of burning. And Christ was trying to describe the place of torment. Now, he used the term Hades when he spoke about establishing his government on earth. He calls it ecclesia. He says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Next verse. Whatever you bind will be bind. Whatever you loose will be loose. Let me explain Hades to you. This is what blew my mind. Mm. Christ is living under a kingdom of Rome. He was living in a colony, Palestine, in that area. And so he understood what it is to be under a kingdom and a colony. And he said these words. He says, let me, it's a paraphrase. Caesar, who is king of Rome, can only rule your life to the point of the grave. In other words, a government can only take taxes from you up to the cemetery. They can only control your life up to the cemetery. Once a person goes to the graveyard, you cannot get taxes from them, you can't get them to pay bills, they can't do nothing. In other words, the control of a government over a citizen ends in the cemetery. Watch Christ. Christ says, let me tell you something. My kingdom is greater than Caesar's because it doesn't end with the cemetery. <laughs> he says the gates of Hades. That means the, the graveyard cannot stop my influence over my citizens' lives. So whether you live or die, it doesn't matter. You are still under his government influence. So that's why death is not a fearful thing to a kingdom citizen. Because on either Kill. side yes. of the grave, you are still under the king's authority. That's why he says to, to live is Christ and to die is gain. There's no difference between the two. So death, he takes away the fear of death because his government doesn't end at the cemetery. His kingdom has citizens on both sides of the grave. So whether you live today or die tomorrow, it doesn't matter. If you are in the kingdom of God, his authority of your life remains constant. That's why death has no more sting, the grave has no more victory, because his kingdom, his government rules over your life on both sides of the cemetery. Now, before we talk about how to colonize, what is a colony? Just give us the headline. A colony is a group of immigrants in a foreign territory who are under their home country. And that's why Christ didn't come until 4,000 years after Adam sinned, because God was waiting for the Roman Empire, which was a prototype of his kingdom, to be established. Scriptures say, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. The Romans were the first kingdoms on, kingdom on earth to establish colonization. Every other kingdom would control people, uproot them, and take them back to their territories. The Romans did the opposite. They would take over territory and send a governor to live in the territory and make the people's Romans. That's what the book is about. So when Christ came to earth, Christ was the king coming back to the territory with the governor on the inside to bring the kingdom back to earth. Now, think about this then. <laughs> Colonization, the, the Romans had a system. Whenever they took over a territory, the Roman king would always send 300 Roman citizens, ship them out to live in the territory that they just took over. 300. Why? Because the Romans figured out a system. If 300 people are in a territory, that's enough to create a culture. Yeah, Lord. That's why God didn't need to put a million people on earth at the beginning. One with everybody in him was enough. So Adam had everybody in his body, and God took this one man, put him on the whole planet, and then said, dominate it for me. Why? Because inside that one body was everybody. And so now we've got the citizens. A colony is a group of citizens in a foreign territory, but they are not under the government of the territory. They are under the government. They are allegiance to the government that they, that they are from. This is why he's supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. You know, we're supposed to be under a different kingdom. Even though we live on planet Earth, our government is in heaven. This is why when they asked Jesus, where did you come from? He was born in Bethlehem, grew up in Nazareth, and ministered in Capernaum. His answer was, I came down from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> what is so remarkable is what he said on, on another program is when Adam, when God created Adam, in him was the kingdom. But then the devil came yes, sir. and Con messed all that contaminated up. Contaminated up. Yeah. Con so now God says, renew your mind. In other words, get back to the original idea of God. And this is important for your ministry. When you are a colony, you are not as wealthy as the territory you are in. 
Oh, you are I as wealthy as the territory you are from. <laughs> so here we have recession going on wow. in America, high gas prices, people losing their houses, unemployment, and God is saying, look, I brought this program into your life to tell you. Number one, you are not under the American economy. If you are a kingdom citizen, you are under heaven's economy. Number two, the government of your local territory cannot help you right now. So you need to put your allegiance to the government above that government, which is the kingdom of heaven. And this is why in the middle of a recession, you can still write a check to Benny Hinn's ministry because you are not as rich as where you are. You are as rich as where you come from. Whoa. That's why the Bible says he shall supply all of your needs. According to his riches and glory. According to his riches where? In his country. You are not as rich as where you live right Malbec now. You are a colonized citizen. You are as wealthy as from where you <laughs> came. <laughs> so that's why we don't, we don't fear what's going on around us. Matter of fact, in a kingdom, yeah, the government takes care of its citizens. This is why when you study the Old Testament, which I think is a great place to learn about kingdoms. Sure. God told him, he says, look, God says, a famine is coming to Egypt. Watch God now. He said, but Moses, don't worry. Tell the children of Israel that when the locust comes, what is a famine? Famine is economic crisis. Yep. He says, when the locust comes, I've already told the locust not to eat the crop of the Israelites. In Goshen. Now, how can a grasshopper <laughs> know different between your corn and my corn? Because under a kingdom government, a thousand may fall at your left and ten thousand may fall at your right, but you are preserved by the country Thank that you're you from. Jesus. And therefore, I say to you today, your support of this ministry is not contingent on what happens in this country or in New York or in London. You are under a country that has a stable government a stable economy. I think some people are just having a praise break right now. I can just feel it, brother, because I, I want to have a praise break. This is incredible. So how do we colonize? The key to colonization is the governor. Every kingdom, you know, Pilate was the most powerful person in that whole region because Pilate was sent from Rome as governor to live among the people, and he was supposed to transform those people into Roman citizens. The Holy Spirit is the most important person on earth because he's been sent here to live among us, in us, and he colonized us by first of all changing our language, changing our history, changing our attitude, changing our mentality, and I told you earlier, the Holy Spirit brings two things. He brings the fruit of the Spirit, which is the the uh, culture of the kingdom, and he brings the power of God, which is the transforming nature. Now, of listen, kingdom. before we go there, because this is awesome stuff. He was telling me this be before we taped. Go back to the idea of the 300 that Rome sent and how that there applies to, our, to the church here. This is amazing. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> so they would send 300 people to colonize. Right. And once the 300 people from Rome was in a place, the, the king knew. That place would become like Rome. And so the church. The church is supposed to be placed in every city in the world, every area. That's why God put you in business. He put you in economics. He put you in sports. He put you in media. God places people everywhere because wherever we are, the kingdom is, and we are yeast. And so the Romans knew, if I could create a colony of people in a place, then the whole place would be colonized. And the king would send the governor to live among those people to make sure that all the culture of the kingdom invades okay, the Okay, now, before we get to the governor, I really want to talk about this, but we will go on tomorrow too, believe me. We are like yeast. Yes. We begin to invade. Absolutely. Slowly and quietly. You know, you get me excited. <laughs> See, you got me excited. I can read this for you from the Bible. The Bible, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast. Yep, it is. That won't put in dough. Now, let me give you five things about yeast very quick. Number one, yeast always seem like it's insignificant. You ever seen yeast? It's a little like a grain of sand. Yeah. Number two, yeast is never intimidated by the size of the dough. Number three, <laughs> yeast works quietly. I love that. Number four, yeast never becomes dough. Dough <laughs> becomes yeast. And number five, oh, yeast geez, grows under heat and pressure. Oh. <laughs> Say that again, this is awesome. <laughs> it grows under heat and pressure. Christ says the kingdom of heaven is like yeast. That means Therefore, when, when persecution... When, <laughs> I gotta stand up, I'm sorry. You are getting me going now. 
So when persecution hits, we expand. My God. Wow. That's why the church is not afraid of persecution, because it's like yeast. The more heat you put on yeast, the more it grows. Lord, we praise you. So whatever you're going through right now, we praise it's going to expand Jesus. your territory. It's going to expand your influence. Oh. Peter says, when you face fiery trials, welcome them as friends. Why? They came to purify you so that you will be not far and wanting. That means you'll be so effective, there'll be no weaknesses in your influence. I'm amazed that my cameraman and floor, floor director are this quiet today. They're probably <laughs> shouting and clapping. This is awesome. So the kingdom of heaven is the most powerful force on earth. And it is the answer to all the world's problems. It is God's original big idea. Okay, now the governor comes back. and... The Holy Spirit is the governor. And the first thing a governor takes over when he colonizes is your tongue. You know, when we were colonized 200 years ago in the Bahamas, when that white man came from England, he made us stop speaking African languages. Why? Because the most powerful thing for unity in a country is language. That is if you want to destroy Amazing. a country, just multiply the languages. You remember Genesis chapter 11? Sure. When they had the first city built? Sure. How did God destroy the city? He didn't attack the city with weapons. They just gave them different languages. He just languages. destroyed languages. Yeah. Well, that's why even America got to be careful. When you start talking about accommodating different languages, you are diluting the power of a country. Whoa, whoa, whoa. America's got to be careful, you said. I rest my case. So every country's unity is based on language. This is why the way God that destroyed... Awesome. The way God destroyed uh, the Tower of Babel yes, project sure. was destroy the languages. The way God restored humanity on a day of Pentecost is giving them a <laughs> language. So now listen, you, you also said something else, and we're almost out of time again. Two things required, power and culture. Yes, power is required in order for you to, to bring about colonization. And there must be culture. See, and so this is where we got the power of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. If you study the fruit of the Holy Spirit, these are literally cultural. Because components. like love, as you said Joy, to me earlier. Joy, peace, yeah, long suffering, That has nothing patience, to do with power. Kindness, goodness. This is this all is culture. This is the lifestyle of the people we're wow. supposed to be. That's, That's amazing. the culture of heaven. Heaven is full of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, goodness, kindness. These are the culture. We're supposed to love everybody. We're supposed to be kind to everybody. Why? Not as a as religious practice, but as the culture of Mr. our Listen, listen. Did you hear what he said? He said that we need the culture. So love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience. That's the culture of heaven. Yes. And the power. Then the power is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. See, it, we're supposed to love people and then have the power to remove disease from them. Okay, we're going to stop. We're going to go on tomorrow and talk about the governor. Hallelujah. And he's just blowing me. I'm, I'm sorry. i got to just lay my hands on my head right now because it's just too much. Hallelujah. You are amazing. Are you enjoying this? Of course you are. Make sure to call your friends and tell them tomorrow.